What's going on everybody? John Eric Pola here with my MMA news and today's guest just defeated Anthony Pettis by unanimous decision to advance to the PFL lightweight final. Uh, that matchup will come against Oliver Aubin Mercier. Please today to be joined by Stevie Ray. Stevie, thanks for doing this man. Really appreciate the time. No worries man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, man, no problem at all. And let's start getting into things here. Uh, we'll start with this. The big thing here, right? PFL, what they do uh, for the, these finals, the winner gets $1 million, right? That's amazing money. Just what's it mean for you to be in a promotion like the PFL to be presented with this opportunity to go out and have a million dollar paycheck on the line? Yeah, I mean, it's unreal. Um, life changing opportunity. Um, and, and don't get me wrong, it's tough. You know, it's one of the toughest things I've had to do, probably. Um, fight pretty much back to back. Um, I've been on fight camp since January. So this whole year, I've basically have been on fight camp. Um, get get around a week off after the fight. Um, and yeah, and then straight back to it. So mentally, it's a bit uh, tough going um, on not only me, but like the family and stuff as well. Um, we've been away for so long and stuff. But uh, but yeah, just obviously an amazing opportunity. Um, and now I'm only one fight away, so uh, yeah. And you mentioned there, right, you're always in training camp, you're always on the go with the PFL season. And just to get to this point, right, it was crazy because you had to beat Anthony Pettis twice in a very short window of time. It was like a a month and a half or something like that, like two fights back to back. And anybody that follows sports knows it's very hard to to do something like that, to go out and beat an opponent two times like that. Just talk about what that was like, kind of going out there, beating him, and then turning right back around and getting in the cage with it, with him again and having to go out there and face him again and ultimately, like you did, beat him again. Uh, I mean, I think it worked out best for me, the way, you know, what, what happened. Um, the fact I got Drew by, with Pettis in the first place, I thought it was cool. You know, I, I know that everybody's tough in the division. He was the number one seed. Uh, so he was like the top dog, uh, probably um, one of the kind of favourites. And yeah, I mean, I submitted him the first time, went out there and he did a stoppage against him to qualify for the playoffs. Um, I needed to stop him within 12 and a half minutes. Um and I went out and done it, done it um, in the second round, uh, and done it with quite a unique submission that not a lot of people even knew what it was. So it went a little bit viral. Um, you know, I got a lot of new followers on social media and um, got my name out there a bit more. Um, and then yeah, like the way it worked out, immediate rematch. Um, you know, some people maybe thought it was a fluke. Uh, you know, landed that lucky sub, and especially because, like I said, it was quite a unique submission. People may be thinking it was lucky, so the fact I went out there and beat him by decision is just proved. You know, I'm I'm here to, I'm here for the winning. Um, and like I said, I just beat the the kind of top guy. Um, yeah, and you mentioned about that submission there too, right? How it went viral and everything. Uh, I do want to ask you one specific question on that. Uh, when you got that submission, was that something that you were looking for in that scenario? Because like you said, you don't see it all the time. It's very unique. Was it something that you kind of knew that you kind of had right there? Or did it kind of weirdly just kind of play? I was like, oh, crap, look at this. Uh, yeah, so I've submitted. Uh, I actually landed that in competition um, a little while before that. Um, I competed on Polaris, the BGJ grappling show. Um it's shown on UFC Fight Pass and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I was against a judo and BJJ black belt, Craig Ewers, um, from the UK. And, yeah, I, I got the same submission against him. Slightly different uh, position, but because he didn't turn into my guard. Uh, but, yeah, it was the same submission. Um, so I finished him in competition with that. Um, and then, obviously pulled off the different variation against Pettis. Um And yeah, I landed in the gym and stuff. So it was something I knew that I could definitely have, especially watching the way he escapes the back. And one of my teammates, Kieran, he pointed that out to me as well and sent me some footage 
also of him doing that. So as we're talking about this, right, we open up talking about this opportunity to fight for a million dollars. We talk about these back-to-back wins over Anthony Pettis. It's been a great, really, first uh, season for you here in the PFL as you make the finals. Uh, just how thankful, I guess, are you for the PFL for this opportunity? Because, right, the UFC, when you were there, it was kind of a, a, a weird ending, right? You were coming off a win, then COVID kind of happened, Right. I mean, it kind of a, a bit of a, a, I guess you'd say, putting your career in a really weird and awkward situation. So just what's it meant for you to kind of have this new promotion to kind of come in and you know, really make things right for you here in your career? Yeah, I mean, literally, I, you know, the whole thing, departure with the UFC, it was off the biggest win of my career at the time. I, I was at the highest of highs after that fight. I just signed a new four fight contract with the UFC. Um you know, there was then some complications between, you know, me and the UFC. And um, I think they were saying, like, because I couldn't get a visa in time and then also the injury at the time as well. There was a lot of, a lot of like, mucky stuff going on. Um, and then, yeah, I went as a free agent, um, ended up emotionally retiring temporarily. You know, I was kind of a bit emotionally drained and almost a bit pissed off with MMA. Um, I'd put everything and my whole life in it for the last 12, you know, 10 or plus years. Um, so to go from that to then the lowest low, being a bit depressed and wondering what I'm going to do with my life, because my knee was, wasn't great at the time. Um, to then, yeah, two and a half years later, um, I made my comeback. It was longer than, you know, the break was longer because of COVID. I I pretty much figured out I wanted to fight, like, weeks after I emotionally retired. Uh, so the only reason that was so long is, was because of COVID. But just, uh, yeah, like, when I beat Pettis the second time, that that was more on my, on my thoughts, you know, just this whole last couple of years rather than the fact that I actually just beat Pettis for the second time. It was more like... You know, a couple of years ago, I was almost done and out. And now, the biggest win in my career. Um, and, yeah, one fight away from a million dollars and the, the PFL world title. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm obviously just really thankful to the PFL for giving me the opportunity. Uh, you know, the Peter, um, the CEO, and uh, Ray Seffo, the president, um and uh, yeah, but you know, I'm going for that million. But also, I, I spoke to Peter at the um, Aerial Hawaii show. Um, we we spoke for about ten minutes, roughly. And I said to him, uh, I said, I seen what Pettis got paid for losing to me the first fight. Um, I mean, he got seven hundred and fifty k, um, which is fair enough. You know, he's the superstar. He's the famous fighter. Uh, so I beat him once. And then uh, I said, you know, once I beat him again, I'm wanting a pay rise because, uh, you know, I, I I am being paid good um, or I thought I was being paid good um, and I was happy with that. But now that I've got two wins over Pettis, seeing what he's getting paid as well and some of the other fighters, uh, yeah, I'm looking for that uh, pay rise after uh, or even before this fight. But yeah, I'm aiming for the million dollars, but like, you know, per fight. Uh, yeah. Cause that, now, is there like, any word? Like, was there any word on if you're going to get that pay raise after the the win, or is there kind of negotiation periods that have to go on there? Uh, well, Pierre Pierre said uh, when I said I was like when I beat him again, I'm wanting uh, wanting that pay rise. He just he said. Uh, you know, he kind of defended Pettis and why he's getting paid, obviously, a lot. And he's brought a lot to PFL, um, a lot of, like, you know, uh, attention and stuff. And I get that. I, I wasn't, you know, dis- disputing that part. But I was just kind of like, you know, once I beat him again, I beat him twice. I'm the new guy and I, I deserve to be compensated. Um, and, yeah, he just said, well, go out and you know what to do then. Go out and get the win. So, yeah. Um, which obviously I went and done, so, yeah. 
And that was that there. And I want to ask you another uh, question going off of uh, what you were talking about before. You were just saying how right when the whole thing was going on with the UFC and the ending and the knee injury, you you re- really were in a really low place in your life. You know, having a quick, sudden retirement from a sport that you love, being in a big promotion like that. However, though, I would imagine that time off had to be a good thing, right? Because I'm sure the knee got to heal up and it kind of gave you now this new kind of burst of energy, this new, you could tell, love for the sport here. I can tell by just by the way you're answering questions with the smile on your face that you're obviously in a very happy place in your career right now. So was there something good that came out of maybe this whole entire thing that you were able to let your body heal up and be able to come back essentially better than ever? Yeah, I mean, I, I look at everything in life, you know. I, I try and turn all the negatives into positives. Um, just try and keep that positive mindset. So, you know, like, for example, if, if you know, if the whole departure with the UFC didn't happen and the knee thing and, the, you know, all that complications, I wouldn't have probably have just beat Pettis twice. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been with the PFL probably. Um, you know, just every everything that happens in life, it directs you on a either new path or um so all the negatives try and see the positives out of that um and now like i said i'm one fight away from winning a million dollars um i'm also with pfl who you know they treat the fighters uh really good um they're a top company that i feel like they're really a uh, you know, they're getting bigger and bigger. Like, they weren't so big in the UK, but they've just got the Channel 4 deal now. They've got the, the show tomorrow night uh, here in Cardiff. Um, and then, obviously, they're going to London next week, uh, building that UK um, kind of audience. Um, and, yeah, I'm just uh, buzzing, you, you know, to, for, for everything. Um, it's, wor- it's all worked out in the end. Yeah, man, it's something how things kind of work out for the better like that. And uh, you were mentioning there how you are, right? Obviously, the fight away from a million dollars and the big payday there. Let's kind of get a little preview of this final matchup here. We'll start with uh, just Oliver as an opponent. Just what have you seen out of him so far? And just talk a little bit as a, you know, a little ways off yet. The uh, the finals aren't until November 25th, but just a little early preview here. Yeah, so a uh, good while away. I've trained with Olivia before. Uh, we've trained and sparred together. Um, you know, we've rolled and uh, we've done some work together. It was a good few years ago. Um, uh, and yeah, obviously I've seen him fight. Um, he's a good fighter. You know, he, he he's a kind of strong, durable guy. But but a kind of grinder fighter. Like, you know, uh, maybe the, not the most exciting at times, but he, he does what he needs to to get the job done. Um, uh, a lot of decisions, his last fights, uh, and yeah, but you know, like everybody, he's got he's got some holes in his game. Um, definitely, I uh, feel like I've got some things that uh, are better than his, and and yeah, it's just down to sometimes who wants it more, who's going to train the hardest, and that's going to be me. And when you mentioned, right, training the hardest, I have to ask this question, too. Obviously, you know, the PFL season is grueling on the body. I think you mentioned before, right, it's pretty much going January, right through the whole year. Uh, Just how are you going to approach a training camp, I guess, for this being that you're literally just coming off a win. November is still a little bit of a way, but still kind of close enough. It's in that weird kind of spot. Do you kind of go right into training camp for this? Or do you let your body heal up, rest for a little bit? What's kind of the, the approach as to how you do a training camp for this fight? Uh, so take take like a mandatory week off. Um, even though I've came out of that fight with no injuries, um, just take, take a week off training. Um, relax, heal up, eat some good food. Um, next week, I'll get back into training. Um, you know, not, not quite as as much or as hard as, you know, being in fight camp. So just enough to keep ticking over. Um, and, uh, yeah, I won't spar for a few weeks um, just because, you know, took some shots and stuff anyway, like regard like I never took any big shots really, but um just getting hit in the head a lot. 
um, it's good to just gear gear brain a wee bit of a break from that. So yeah, there's no reason I need to be sparring for the next few weeks. Uh, so yeah, just train, kind of enjoy training. Um, for the next few weeks, and then uh, yeah, I'll probably do like a six to eight week fight camp. Um, I mean, I'm already in shape, so I'll 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 try and stay in shape anyway, uh, just to not make it harder. Try and keep my weight down a bit, no no blowing up too much. Um, yeah, uh, that's pretty much how I'll do it. Awesome, man. We're looking forward to seeing the fight. Uh, last thing now before you roll out, uh, go ahead and your social media so people know where to follow you at. You have any management sponsors, coaches, teammates, family, friends, whoever you got to give shout outs to. You get the last word. Take it away. Thanks, mate. Uh, so, yeah, thanks to my manager, Ali Abdelaziz, um, for, you know, sorting everything, um, getting me the, the, into the PFL in the first place. Um, and yeah, thanks to PFL, um, all my teammates, all my supporters, um, and yeah, my sponsors as well. I mean, I've got a good few where, um, go check out my social media pages. You see my social uh, sponsors on there, um, that I've posted up. My social media tags are Stephen, where V, uh, Ray MMA. So Stephen Ray MMA. Um, that's my Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Um. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just, just thanks to all the supporters and everybody that's rooting for me and helping me. All right, Stevie. Thanks so much again for all the time here. Uh, again, just as a reminder to everybody who's watching today's interview, that lightweight final against Oliver Aben Mercier is November twenty fifth. So little ways away, but make sure you guys have that date circle on your calendar. And also make sure you guys are checking out MyMMANews.com, checking out all of our great work. Go to our social media pages, give us a like and a follow on there. And if you like today's interview, please make sure to go to the bottom, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to this YouTube channel as well. We'll see you later, everybody.